Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great today. Now in today's lesson, we're going to start with introduction to data definition language. Now in our previous videos, we have talked about data manipulation language. So today we'll be looking at data definition language. And then under this topic, we'll look at your create statement. That's to create table, create index, create views and all whatnot. And then we'll look at the alter statement, how to alter some of the things, the objects you've created. We'll also look at the drop statement. And then we'll look at the rename statement and also the truncate statement. However, before we go on further, there are a few tips you should know. Now, one of the things you should know is the fact that um, most of these things that will be created or most of the things that um, we will be doing with this data definition language are known as objects. Okay, objects could be tables, could be views, could be sequences, could be indexes and could be synonyms. Okay, now what's the table? We are define the table when we started this course but for benefit of those that have not actually gone through that lecture the table is actually the basic unit of storage okay which is comprised of rows and columns data is actually stored in a table in form of rows and columns and then what are views views actually represent logical subsets of data from one or more tables. I'll give you an example. If you have a complex query, for instance, and um, you don't want to always write this complex query each time um, there is a requirement to do so, you can create what is known as a view, okay? And then that query will be stored as a view. You can select from the view as though you are actually writing that complex query. Then a sequence helps you to generate numeric values. Then the next object we want to talk about is actually index. What is an index? Your index helps you to improve the performance of your query. Okay, it helps you to retrieve information faster. If you have a very large table, um, instead of a database scanning, you know, row by row, you know, in search of a particular information, your index will help speed up the query, you know, by going to um, it, the particular place where it feels your information is located and just picking it out. Then the synonym actually gives an alternative name to an object. Okay, we are going to see all of this practically as we go on. Now, one of the things you should understand about a table structure is the fact that, you know, uh, tables can be created at any time. Okay, even when users are using the database. Okay, um, table structure can be modified online as well. You can either create or modify the tables online it doesn't matter if you know users are connected to the database or not and then some very um, useful tips in terms of um, the naming rules when you want to create a table your table name must begin with a letter so you cannot start creating a table you know and then you name it 20 a b that's wrong it must begin with a letter Okay, and then must contain the characters A to Z, either uppercase or lowercase, and then it can contain the numbers zero to nine. Okay, and then it can also contain the underscore, it can contain the dollar sign and then the hash sign. Another rule of naming a table is that it must not be a duplicate. Okay, so if you have a table, that is named employees. You cannot create another table with the name employees. Okay, and also your table must not be an Oracle server reserved word. For instance, you cannot create a table with the name select. You cannot create a table with the name having. All of these are Oracle reserved words. So you cannot create a table with an Oracle server reserved word. So now that we already have these guidelines, um, the next thing we want to talk about before we start creating our table, um, don't worry, we have loads of examples for you. So um, the next thing we want to talk about is data types. You don't just go about creating tables, okay? You have to create the data types. So if you don't know what data types are, 
you know, how do you go about creating your table? Because your different columns actually contain different data types. For instance, your salary column does not necessarily have to be a character column. It has to be a number column. Date of birth or date of engagement, for instance, has to be a date data type. So you have to be familiar with the different data types. So I'll just quickly run through them, you know, before we start creating the table. Now, the first one I want to talk about is what is known as the VACA2. In summary, it's known as variable character. Okay, it has a variable length of character. Now, um, your first name column, your last name column could all be, you know, VACA2 data type. Okay, and um, even your email, you know, could be VACA2 data type. Now, the next one I want to talk about is CA, or some people call it CHA. Okay, it's spelled C-H-A-R. Now, this is actually not so different from your VACA2. The only difference is that this actually has a fixed length, unlike the VACA2 that has a variable length. Okay, this has a fixed length and has a default size of one, which is also the minimum size, okay? Maximum size is about 2,000 bytes. Now, the next data type we want to talk about is the number data type. So basically, you store numbers in this particular data type. And then we have the date data type, which I've mentioned earlier. So enough of this story, let's create our first table. Okay, so if you look at our screen, you see um, a create table statement. Okay, it says create table test underscore table. And then in bracket, you see the different columns and data type. Now you see the employee ID and the data type that is assigned to it is number. The e name, data type that is assigned to it is variable character, which is VACA2, and the length is 100. So once you type anything that exceeds 100 characters, you won't be able to insert search into this database because it will be exceeding the length of the column. And then the salary column has a data type of number. Okay. And then it has eight digits and then two decimal places. Then the start date is a date data type. Okay. And then we are using the word default sys date. So whatever date um, the person is starting will be what the system date is saying. And then if the person is entitled to a commission, the commission column has a number data type as well. For that, you have just two digits and two decimal numbers. So this is just the default way of creating table. If we try to create this table, I'll just execute this statement and see what the output is. You can see table test underscore table created. Now let's assume we want to insert data into the table. So we have another query, insert into test underscore table, and then the columns we want to insert is actually the employee ID, the E name. Okay, these are the values one, and then the E name is Timmy. So I'll quickly execute this and we'll see what happens. It says one row inserted. Okay, let me commit. Commit means to save. So commit complete. Now, um, I want to go ahead and select everything, you know, from the table. Test underscore table. I'll execute. And then we can see that the employee ID, we have one. And for the E name, we have see me okay however because we did not insert a value for the salary the salary column is showing us null and then the start date is 
2nd August 2022, the commission percent is null because we did not include any value in the insert statement. So this is um, just a simple way to create a table. Now in, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to create table with constraints. Okay, you would have observed that there are no constraints on this table. So we're going to create a table with constraints. So remember that our data definition language has in its list the drop statement. So let's see if we can actually drop this table. Let's see if we can drop this table. Drop table test underscore table. So I'll ex execute this. The table has been dropped. So this is one way you get to use your drop statement. But then in our next video, when we look at um, creating tables with constraints, we'll look at some other things as it relates to drop table. So I hope this video was interesting to you. If it was, kindly like it and share it widely. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I share another valuable content. Bye for now.